R.J. Barrett, the latest and some say the biggest name in basketball to come out of Canada. He's already got the hardware, including a recent Harry Jerome Award, an accolade usually reserved for people so much further into their careers. He goes by R.J., but his full name, Rowan Barrett Jr., carries a lot of weight. His father helped put Canadian basketball on the map. CBC Toronto host Dwight Drummond has known the family for some time, and so he caught up with father and son earlier this week. Quickly goes the other hand, and Barrett throws it down with the left hand. And he says, there's more where that came from. Oh, R.J. Barrett. Triple-double threat. Underneath, Barrett slams it home. Ouch. At just 17 years old, R.J. Barrett has won every major award a high school basketball player could possibly win. In fact, this young man, with the same baby face I've seen for years, is already being touted as the next LeBron James. Oh, Come on, oh, it's R.J. Oh, Barrett. Oh, Barrett just keeps smoking. Perhaps his biggest accomplishment to date, leading Canada to a historic win over the U.S. He has been utterly sensational. Before ripping apart Italy to win Canada's first ever gold medal in international basketball competition. I've made a decision that next year I will be attending Duke University. RJ was the number one rated recruit in the world before choosing to play basketball for powerhouse Duke University this fall. But make no mistake, he's headed to the NBA and quick. Right now, nearly every basketball expert on the planet has projected him to be the number one pick in next year's draft. And if you ask RJ, that sounds about right. Pretty simple, go to college and go to the NBA and be a star. And right there with him, throughout his journey, his father, Rowan Barrett, a Canadian basketball icon himself. Here comes Rowan Barrett. Career high gets even higher. I've known Rowan Barrett for years and have seen firsthand just how special this relationship is. I recently visited their family home in Mississauga, just outside of Toronto, to catch up and see how father and son are doing after this whirlwind year. Being the most decorated teenager playing basketball in North America right now since LeBron James. I mean, it's hard for me just from the outside to fathom, but mm. what's it like thinking about it from the person who actually pulled it off? Because when you look mm. at that award, mm. that Naismith Award, and you see those names, that's basketball royalty. Kobe's on there. Yeah. LeBron's on there. It seems like it's not even sinking into you, man. I don't think it really has, you know, sunk in yet. Just, I don't know, I had so many goals and I was able to achieve them and I'm really happy, but there's so much more that I have to do. So I feel like when it's all said and done, I'll really be then able to Then you're going to look back? Yeah. I mean, everything you know that's happened this year has been great. You know, I enjoyed the ride, but it really all started when, you know, playing for my country. That's a big deal for yeah. you. Do you. Is that because of your dad and, and he did it too? You know? He you, did I mean, it. he's got his yeah. Team Canada <laughs> jersey up on the wall in this house, but now you can get your jersey up there beside him. For sure, so you know that means a lot. You know, just continuing the legacy. I think we were only 16 at the time, right? Were you 16 or you were just? I had just the... turned 17. Okay, yeah. you just turned 17. Talk about that experience mm -hmm. representing Canada and bringing us our first gold medal like that in, in, in competition. Um, it was tough uh, at the beginning. I was the youngest guy. I had to earn my respect, earn a lot of things. But as soon as we got to the tournament, we just started clicking together. We had an early loss, but then. We were able to, you know, knock off the U.S. and just... You say that so nonchalant. I don't know if it was a <laughs> knock off the U.S. I don't know, like the world basketball powerhouse who wins everything yeah. year after year. This was a first for Canada. Yeah. I feel like we've had, we had guys that, you know, played in the U.S. So they're going up against American guys all the time. So yeah, no, no one was fear. scared, yeah. So. And when you got off that plane and you came home to that hero's welcome, yeah, come on. Yeah. See, we didn't really know, like, I mean, we won, and then we're like, okay, what happens now? And yeah. then when we got home, I mean, everyone was there, we were so, we were surprised, but we also realized we did something great for the country. I, I, I still just, I, I listen to you talk now, and, and I listen to you like you're happy, you're smiling. None of this is, is getting to, it's not going to your head at all, like all of nah, this? I have many people in my life to keep me grounded, so. <laughs> Yeah? Yeah. Who's that? Is that mom? Is that dad? Oh, mom and dad all the time. What do they tell you? What are, what are some of the lessons you get? I'm sure a little brother's like, yeah. whatever, you're not that good. <laughs> exactly. It's kind of hard when your dad's an Olympian. So when you do things and you realize, okay, well, his jersey's on the wall right there. He's yeah. done a lot more. 
Do you remember watching him, him play when you were younger? And did you want to be like him? I remember in Europe watching him play, and then I would run on the court and try to shoot after. <laughs> so do, I just, do what he did? Yeah, so I just remember, you know, always trying to follow him. So if he made a basket, one leg up in there, you'd go and I'd try, try to, to practice <laughs> those moves. <laughs> He'd be always on the court after the games and shooting and, you know, coming into practice. And the great thing was that my professional team always had a club team at the lower ages. So oh, okay. while I was playing in the men's, he would be playing with the children. And you got to wear the same and uniform as dad? And the same uniform as dad and, and everything else. And he had the same number and everything else. And, uh, you know, it was, it was a good early beginnings for him. Did you know right away, did you have this plan in your mind that, you know what, this kid is going to be a baller, man, I'm, you know, like uh, his daddy? You know, initially, no. I mean, you never, you know, when they're young. Uh, but this was actually his first team in Canada when oh, he that's, came here that's, to live. Ooh, look at that right? picture. The technician, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, when he, was, when he was eight years old. And um, it was at that time he came in and he said, right after this, like 11 turning 12, he said, Dad, I want to make the Hall of Fame. I want to be an NBA champion. I want to make the NBA all-star team. Yes, like and a lot of kids will say that at yeah. that age. You know, you go to schools, you talk yes. to kids. All the kids, they, they want to be the yeah. next Michael Jordan. What did you think as a dad when you're hearing that? Did you want to temper his expectations I, I, a little I, bit? You know what? I, I, I tried to temper with yeah. letting him know what it was going to take. I was like, so you understand this means that this is going to be some early morning stuff, you know, before school, you know, before your, your buddies wake up, you're in the gym, and, like, you understand what this is. And he's like... I'm ready, to, I'm going to do it. I was like, okay. Took out the whiteboard, we wrote NBA Hall of Fame on top, and then we just started writing all the years down to his current age of 11 at the time. And so his first goal was like, by the 13, when, by the time I'm 13, Dad, I want to be number one in Canada. When I'm 14, I want to be number one in Canada and top 10 in the United States. And by 13, he was number one in the U.S. And he's been ever since. At what point did you realize that, that he was going to be the phenom that he came to be? Because I know you two yes. must have played one-on-one, yes. -on -one, and I we know your kid wants to crush you. We were playing one-on-one, -on -one, yeah. you know, but Daddy still has the crown, okay? <laughs> you know, I haven't played him in a couple years. You know, I got a bad back. Smart. You know, but, yeah, that's the okay, excuse. I got a bad okay, back. we're going to stick to it. But, yeah. you know, I, I saw it actually on the floor against the other children with him. You know, it was in seventh grade. Mm -hmm. He was finally playing in his own age because he'd always played above his age. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had these goals about being number one and wanting to be this guy. And I said, well, RJ, you know, this game you're about to play now, they're saying that this guy is the best player that's in this country. That's your age. And I said, so those kind of goals that you want, well, there he is. Go get him. Show and prove. And oh, my God, what he did to this kid. <laughs> you know, I mean, he was so competitive. I saw for the first time, he was always competitive, but I, I saw for the first time, like, a lion coming out, like... You know, he, he got him in fouls, and the kid was going to the bench. He says, you can't guard me. And I was like, whoa, is this my son? I, I got to have a conversation with you after the game, son. We don't do that, son. Like, wow. what's going on? But I saw a lion coming out. He's at, like, every game. He's always there. Throughout the game, if, you, if you're watching me, I look over at him a lot, and he just makes a certain face, and I just know what it is. So we had that certain type of connection, you know, off the court to, you know, Loving father, always there for my brother and I. Um, that that is a, a a special bond, you know. And but that name came with some pressure. Yeah. So right. and in the GTA anyway, right here, man. Like you know, he was basketball mm. legend in this town. When you were coming up, people mm. must have been like, oh, that's. Yeah. A, they must have seen that Barrett and said, well, you better be able to play. Mm -hmm. For sure. When I was younger, uh, that used to happen a lot when we'd go out places. You know, oh, you're you're Ducky's kid and stuff like that. <laughs> Uh, there was a little bit of pressure when I was younger. I was still trying to prove myself. Um, everyone would say I'm just getting things because of my dad. And, but now I'm able to say, you know, I've actually worked for all these things and it's going great. You've got your own. Yeah. Trying to surpass him. Yeah, trying to surpass and be my own person. They're going to be like, oh, that's RJ's dad. <laughs> so. We're going to end it right there. He's not going to be happy with it, but we're going to end it right there, man. <laughs> If R.J. Barrett is picked first in next year's NBA draft, he will complete a Canadian trifecta. With the first pick in the 2013 NBA draft, the Cleveland Cavaliers select... Anthony Bennett Whoa! of Toronto, Canada.
With the fist bump and a smile, Bennett made NBA history, becoming the first Canadian to be chosen number one. Andrew Wiggins. A year later, it was Andrew Wiggins who stepped up for Canada, going his first pick. And in his debut season of 2015, he became the NBA's Rookie of the Year.